Okay. So I first thank the organizers to give me the opportunity to present not even preliminary data because I will not present any data on the biodatasome essay because this is a long-term essay, two years at least. So for the moment there is really no data at all, no preliminary stuff, nothing to present. But I will present you the reason why we tested biodatasome uh, and how we're going to test that. So as you, most of you know, the very first um, description that has been made on a patient sample with low vaccine was a profound and severe defect in iron sulfur cluster protein. We did that and more than 10 years ago on the heart sample of a, a, a young lady. And it was the very first biochemical markers for hydrochataxia in humans. As a consequence, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. As a consequence, or associated with this lack of iron sulfur cluster synthesis um, caused by fataxin depletion, you've got this phantom chemistry <coughs> that started due to the oxygen, the iron accumulation, maybe which triggers the formation of superoxide and ROS uh, react, uh, reactive oxygen species in the mitochondria. That gives us the idea to propose to use idebenon because idebenon is a very efficient antioxidant that targets the mitochondria and we now have some evidence, let's say, that idebenon can act on this part of the, the cascade of events associated with fatalxin depletion. But more recently, we described something that happened in cells with low fatalxin that happens before even the loss of iron sulfur cluster. It's a fact that the cells are quite sensitive to oxidative insults. And this is illustrated here, as you can see. Sorry. So in, you've got here control cells. Here you've got patient cells with low vaccine content, and you see here something that you can see in control cell when you treat the cell with oligomycin, we've got a probe that reacts to the production of superoxide, and so you see that when you treat the control cell with the oxidative agent, uh, reagent, you have this accumulation of the probe in the cell, but after 30 minutes, then you, you get rid of the superoxide because the control cells are able to get rid of the superoxide. When you do the similar experiment in patient cells, who have, uh, uh, which have, I repeat, normal respiratory chain, normal iron sulfur clusters, if you do the same experiment, when you treat the cell with oligomycin, you've got a major production of superoxide, even more than in control, and then even after a long time, you still have this uh, superoxide in the cells. And this was the first demonstration that the cells were unable to cope with the superoxide due to the loss of, or to the depletion of radaxin. We went further and we, we showed that the reason for that is that the superoxide dismutase enzyme, the enzymes that normally cope with the superoxide, are not expressed or not overexpressed in infrataxin depleted cells. Here you've got the control in white. You see that this superoxide dismutase is induced as a response to oligomycin, the oxidative uh, agent. This is control cell. And you see if you do the same experiment, with fataxin depleted cells, you've got no induction at all of superoxide dismutase, which explains why superoxide remains in the cell. And this is true for the mitochondrial enzyme, and this is true also for the copper zinc enzyme, which is part, partly also present in the mitochondria. So, we've got the idea that maybe one way to attack the disease 
would be to find a way to re-express the superoxide dismutase, or at least yeah, to, to, to work on, on, on the fact that these cells are not able to, to react to oxidative stress. So we thought that maybe we can understand what happened to explain why SOD are not induced. And we came to this, this scheme, which was known before we started the study, which says that the expression of the superoxide dismutase protein is under the dependence of a gene for SOD, which is controlled by a factor which is called NRF2. This factor is under basal condition present in the cytosol. Here is the nucleus, here is the cytosol of the cell. This factor is bind, bound to actin filaments, and when you've got an oxidative insult, NRF2 is released from the actin filament, goes in the nucleus, goes to the gene and increase the transcription of the gene and increase the SOD gene, uh, the SOD protein. So we came to the conclusion that maybe in, in, in cells with low fat axin, this system is not functional. We study then control cells and fat axin depleted cells to look if NRF2 was normally reactive or not in, in fat axin depleted cells. You've got the illustration of what I said just before. Here is control cell, here it's patient cells, and as you can see, in control cells, NRF2, which is marked by this green color, is bound to the actin filament under basal condition. If you stress the cells with an oxidative insult, NRF2 is released from the actin filament. You do not see the, anymore the green color on the filament. But instead, it goes to the nucleus of the cell as predicted by previous studies. If you do the same studies on patient cells, you see that under basal condition, NAF2 is not bound to the actin filament. You do not color the, the actin filament. And when you stress the cell, you do not have any clear localization of NAF2 in the nucleus. <coughs> 